but after 1975, communists take over Vietnam, we lost everything. The most important we lost was freedom. We don't have freedom to say, we don't have freedom to eat, we don't have freedom to moving around, we don't have freedom to religious. Where could I live? Tell me. They closed the seminary. They told me to get out of the seminary. Where did I go? Everywhere, I stopped everywhere, I would risk going to prison. I was caught that one time. My sister tried to get out and she was caught and she, she would put it in jail with her two children, you know, about two months. And they let her out because she has this younger children, a minor with her at the time. My brother tried to get out and he was locked up for six months. They put me in jail because I would try to escape. I'm an unlucky and they caught you. That's in jail. And the other thing, when we go to the church, there are many secret police stand outside watching who was, what they doing, where they living. After 1975, you know, it's kind of uh, restricted. Means that they could come to your house at night and they look for those who were not in the family list. With each family was registered in a family register. And they check the list and you're not in the list. That's it. So that, at that time, my friend went to visit his parents and at night they um, did a search in his house and they found him not listed in, in the family register. So he took him in jail and just like that he stayed, he stayed three months in jail. After getting out of the jail, he got all kinds of scars on his body. Freedom is number one. Freedom is always, you know, number one. And the only reason why I escaped from, you know, the country because of the freedom. We were on a little boat like that for 32 people in so little boat. I mean, that boat may be rented here for 10 persons or, or 1,500 pounds, something like that. <laughs> but we, we, 32 of us got in that, in that boat. We don't want to leave our country. No, nobody wants to leave your hometown because, you know, hometown is a place that have a lot of good memory. Nobody wants it. So I don't want to leave my country, but I have no choice. I miss all kinds of things. Friends, most of us friends. You can't live anymore, so you took any risk just to live. Even if you have to, you have to die on the ocean, it's much better than living like that. No place to, to set your foot. After the uh, Vietnam were collapsed and the communists took over and we were persecution, we can't find a job because I was related with the U.S. government before. I was former employee with the U.S. government. I can't find any, you know, job and with the hardship for life there, I have no choice and have to leave my family and try to escape it by myself. After 1975, most of my friends go to re-education camp. Actually, it's the jail under communists. 90% was done for any reason. A long time in the jail, 13 years, 13, 15, 20 years in the jail. So 90% friend of mine was done. Anytime I go through the cemetery or to see a family friend, can hold my tear. My family member is still there, my brother, sister, and my friends still over there. And we, you know, after a couple of years, four or five years, I come back. They still, you know, spy people and, you know, checking on people background and, you know, follow you if they suspect you something. Even though they say that, you know, the country right now is open. There's a lot more freedom and they invite a lot of foreigners or, you know, the Vietnamese people that, you know, live outside the country to come back for visit and all that. But behind you, they still doing stuff like that. Um, a lot of changing right now. So you see the life over there is kind of better, much better than 15 years I left there. Uh, right here, you have everything. That's what I can see. I can tell you.
and over there right now, people is, the life is improving. I do feel a little bit, you know, about um, going back to Vietnam with, you know, the way that how I escaped from the country.